What's up everyone? Happy Easter weekend. And I hope you guys are having some fun with your friends and family right now, relaxing, enjoying the weekend. Stock market was closed on Friday. Um, if you're an active trader, you're probably just hanging out, enjoying your Friday. Um, so I wanna cover for what to look for this week. I'm not gonna make the video too long because I know you guys have stuff to do and it's a holiday, but I do want us to you know, inform you like what's gonna be going on in the market this week. So let's just jump right into it. Um, so first, uh, we're gonna start off with uh, the economic events and then you know, some things to pay attention to. There's a lot of earnings coming up this week and I have some just market axioms too to, uh, pr to tell you guys that some interesting statistics and facts that um, I think you'll like. Um, so this past week, the, the NASDAQ actually made a new all-time high. Um, the Qs are, depending on if you watch the ETF, the, the Qs is triple Qs is the ticker symbol, and, or the NQ, which is future, the futures market, and made a new all-time high. So the market seems to be being led by the tech sector at the moment. Um, so, I'm actually looking for potential continuation, but it depends on what happens in the market this week. The daily candles do look bullish, but we'll cover that in the technical review. Um, some things to watch for in the major economic events this week. Monday, we're gonna have existing home sales at 7 a.m. This is all gonna be at Pacific Standard Time again, because I live in San Diego. So the existing home sales are all, I noticed that they're all trending down in 2008, 18, excuse me. Um, but recently, since starting last month, the, the, the home sales spiked up. So I'm looking to see if that will continue, um, see if there's a lot of you know, people buying real estate. Uh, so then on Tuesday at 7 a.m., we're gonna have, oh, excuse me, the, the, the previous one was the actually existing home sales. And on Tuesday, we're gonna have new home sales. And that's the one I'm gonna pay attention to more importantly, because I wanna see if if there's people in the market buying real estate. And then also Richmond Manufacturing Index, and those both are gonna be at 7 a.m. And then on Wednesday, this actually isn't a US event, this is for Canada, but it's pretty important because it has to do with their bank. So at 7 a.m., we're the Canada, the Bank of Canada is actually gonna have their monetary policy statement. So it's always interesting to see what the other banks, not just the United States, what they're doing you know, what they're saying about the their economy and also the global economy. And 7.30 a.m. we'll have crude oil inventories. And then a tentative event is gonna probably be, if it does happen, it will, this is the Bank of Japan monetary policy statement. This will probably happen in the overnight futures market. So I'd say probably around 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, sometime after that. This is gonna be on Wednesday again. And then Thursday, at 5.30 a.m., this is a pretty big data point to pay attention to, and that's gonna be the core durable goods orders and unemployment claims. That's gonna be at 5.30 a.m. And then tentative, we're gonna have the Treasury Currency Report. And then lastly on Friday, GDP numbers. This is gonna be for the quarter, uh, quarter to quarter report. So that's gonna be at 5.30 a.m. and then at 7 a.m. we're gonna have the revised University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment and Inflation Expectations. Um, just so you know, preliminary is preliminary expectations or inflation expectations of consumer sentiment has a, a bigger effect than the revised numbers. Um, so, and then I noticed, I saw an article saying that uh, there's new rounds of USA and China trade talks. So, um, the two presidents, President Trump and President Xi of China, uh, seem to have agreed to two more face-to-face -face talks or two meetings with their top negotiators in hopes that they'll reach an agreement maybe as early as uh, the end of May. Um, but I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they keep delaying this uh, until the end of the year. I mean, it doesn't seem like they're in a rush because they obviously want the best for both their countries and they're not willing to compromise, it doesn't seem at the moment, so especially Trump. Um, so there's gonna be earnings this week, a lot of earnings. I don't really wanna go through all of them. I'm going to leave the link to Earnings Whispers website so you guys can take a look, but the big ones that I'm gonna be paying attention to 
We have Twitter. This is on Tuesday. Twitter, Lockheed Martin. We have Snapchat, iRobot, eBay, Texas Instruments. Wednesday is full of big names reporting. We have Boeing, Caterpillar, Facebook, Microsoft, Tesla, Visa, PayPal, even Chipotle is reporting. And Thursday, Amazon, we had Intel, Starbucks, Grubhub, and then lastly, Friday, American Airlines and ExxonMobil. I mean, there's a lot more reporting, but those are just the ones that I'm, um, the bigger names that I notice on my list that I have in front of me. And then I do have t top 10 stocks that I'm looking at for swing trades this week. I'm going to review five of them, but uh, if you receive my email newsletter, I'll I'll cover the other five in there. I'm not going to go into full analysis, maybe just five of them in this video, but um, I'll just let you guys know what I'm looking at for potential swing trades. And usually I just trade bullish on the swing trades unless, um, because that's the dominant market direction at the moment until it changes. So I'll be covering, besides the major indices, I'll look at Facebook, I'll look at Goldman Sachs, I'll look at Raytheon. I ch it's between Raytheon or Lockheed Martin, but I'm going to look at Raytheon because I like the chart better. Uh, and then also Riot, which is that blockchain company. Um, you guys, if you haven't noticed, that cryptocurrency has taken off and there's been some bullish action for quite a few weeks now. So um, companies that are in the stock market that are involved in the cryptocurrency industry are starting to see some bullish buying come in too. And lastly, I want to, before we get into this technical review, I want to leave you guys with some market axioms, some really interesting statistics based on you know the, the history of the market, especially the S&P 500. So I got my notes in front of me. I'll just read it right off to you. So the last nine times a yield curve inversion happened, a recession began a year or so later, with only two exceptions in the years 1966 and 1998. And the stock market typically experiences a significant pullback, I would say greater than 5%, a few months before a recession. The next one, the US has been in a bull market for more or less 10 years, which is the longest on record, in case you guys didn't know. <laughs> in the nine decades from 1929 through 2018, the S&P 500 lost half or more of its value five times. That's actually a lot given about 90 years. Um, severe crashes like those occur on average every 18 years. So let's just say once every 20 years, there's a, a, a huge pullback in the stock market. In the, in, in the 126 year period from 1892 through 2018, a 20% or more bear market has occurred 15 times. And if you don't, the standard way of determining whether or not we're in a bear market is if we have a 20% pullback about 20% from the most recent high. And bear markets happen approximately once every eight years. So we're a little bit past that at the moment. Um, doesn't mean we have to have one, but it's always good to follow patterns and trends and cycles of the market based on historical data. And last one I have is eight of the last 10 bear markets have cost equity investors more than 30% of their holdings. That sucks, honestly. Uh, I mean, I've don't want anyone to ever experience that pain of losing that much money and not knowing what to do then, probably selling one before the market U-turns and they could have made all their money back and more, which is usually what typical inexperienced investors do or traders and it's, it's why most traders and investors lose money. Um, and this degree of loss uh, has occurred on average once per decade, so once every 10 years. So just wanna leave you guys with that. It's cool to think about. Um, I like, I'm a numbers guy and I like looking at, you know, history and patterns and because it kind of gives you an edge uh, looking forward because we're all human and the, and if you think about it, the stock market is just, besides all the trading bots, but uh, it's just a combined, you know, thought process and bias of all the people that are trading in the marketplace. You know, what does everyone think? Where's the money going? People bullish, people bearish. You know, it's one giant psychological game, you know, and people are always anticipating where the market can go, and that's usually how people play the market, because it's always forward-looking, you know, unless events happen in real time. But usually they're over-exaggerated, as you'll see if you're a day trader. Um, but um, let's jump into that technical review.
And I'm going to cover the major indices and then uh, five of those equities that I mentioned. All right, let's do this. All right, guys, let's start with the S&P 500, the E-mini futures contract. This is ES. So let me zoom in a little bit here. Let me a little bit more. I have the lines drawn. So this is the major level that we can't seem to get over right now. It's 26 quarter, 29, 26 quarter. It's the high of this, the second, uh, the day after we had this lower high come in where we had that previous all time high back here at 29.47. That's gonna be a critical area. You see how we're kind of topping right there, but this daily candle on Friday, see like the last Tuesday through Thursday it was kind of like a consolidation. There were some short trades to be had during the day. And then you can see that we came and tested this lower trend line that I mentioned last week and we're holding there. And I think as long as we hold on a closing basis above 2,900, we should go higher. But the longer that takes, the more likely that there will be a chance of us pulling back. You know, if the bulls don't have any momentum to keep this keep this trend going, we could see a, a pullback of some sort. But I think if we can clear this, really want to clear like this, uh, let's see here, like the 18 area or even the 20 to be conservative. Let's go to the hourly really quick and see. Well, you can kind of see we're breaking that down channel right here. So that's a good sign. You really want to get above, yeah, like maybe this 15 area, but I think this 18 will do it. If we get above 29, 18, we should have a pushback towards that uh, that recent high we had last week, which I believe was around 23 half, yeah. So we clear that. You can see we have a trend line continuing up here. I think if we continue to grind higher, eventually we'll come and test that 29.47 and potentially go higher, um, but we'll see. I do think testing this new all this all time high of 2947 is very possible this week or in the next week or two. Um, but uh, if we do lose this steep uptrend line, there is support. If we lose 2900, I don't think this these low. I think a 2866, 2865 will probably be where we'll go. I don't see much support. I mean, there is support at 2878, but I think we'll probably slice through that and go to 2866. And that will be the backside of this, this trend line where we broke out from. And then the 50 day SMA will eventually catch up. And if we go below there, then you got to look to this lower trend line in the 200 day SMA. It's going to be around 2785, 2790 area if we pull back further. Um, but there is support at 2820. Those are the levels down that I have. And then finally, you know, 20, like the 27, 25 area, and then 2700. But that's like extreme case. But let's take a look at, I just want to take a look at the weekly really quick. Yeah, we kind of have a doji format on the weekly, right under strong resistance. So actually, 22 quarter is the open of this candle. So we really need to clear that, like I was saying, the 18. We'll probably have a chance, the bulls might have a chance to push us back up to the all-time high. But um, the fact that we have a doji here, this could be an evening star reversal for a pullback. But uh, probably a lot depends on the earnings and how the economic data is reported this week. But just follow the price action, right? So let's take a look at trying to see if like an upper target, if we go higher and have to use a fib here. I was using, could probably go here to here. Oh, that's not good enough. Yeah, I like this this fib right here. So you can see how it aligns. The fib target aligns with where I was just mentioning that 26 quarter. So I think an upper target, yeah, I think I mentioned this last time, 2968 area would be a nice target. And then that 3,000 area, just because it's a big round number everyone's talking about, I think mentally it would might have like, if we do break out and push higher, we would probably have more of a melt up than a meltdown. The, the likelihood of that happening is higher. Um, and then I, if we do go higher, I 
think 3,000 will probably just break through. But um, we'll have to wait and see how that happens. There could be a lot of people jumping into the market then. If we clear this all-time high, that might get trapped, which is typically what happens. People wait till the last minute to buy, and then they end up getting the rug pulled out from underneath them, and then they just – they're pretty much their accounts get wrecked. Um, let's take a look at the NQ really quick. Looks bullish to me. We're holding this uptrend. We can't lose the low of Friday, especially the 76.50 area. If we do, more than likely going to come down to the 75.45, 75.23 area. That will be the next support, but this trend looks good. It looks like it will continue up as long as we clear that new all-time high. And I think I had a target of – Let's see here. I think it was around like 7,800. Let me zoom in a little bit. Oops, sorry. Draw a fib. Like this guy right there. That's good enough for me. Oh, even 7,900 area. Well, I mean, you, since we don't really have any data, since it's an all-time high, we're breaking through. I would say just follow that trend line, you know, I mean, that will be your resistance, the trend line, and then use a fib to gauge where we could go. 7850 to 7900 will probably be the next target for NQ for me if we continue to grind higher. And then, of course, those lower support areas that I mentioned, you have one right here, 7545, and then the 7525 area. And then below there, it might get a little ugly back to the 50 to SMA uh, around 72.75. Let's take a look at the YM. YM is holding its trend too. You can see there's another trend line down here that'll be support. It's lining with the 50 to SMA. Finally broke through this level that I mentioned. We closed above the 26,472. 26, Strong signal for the Dow Jones futures contract and with decent volume too, you know. So that's a good sign that there is, there is people stepping in to buy. And I think, I mean, we're, we're in this tight channel. There's a top trend line right here. We reject, started there, rejected here. Could we make another higher high from here and reject? Yeah, I think it's very possible. If you look over here, if I zoom in, the next resistance area is going to be around 26,800, 26,820. And then you have the, the all time high, 26,966. So I think those two, I mean, most, besides, since the NASDAQ already made an all time high last week, besides the Russell, which is the weakest, which concerns me a little bit, the Dow Jones and the SP 500 are about they're both I think less than a percent and a half away from their all-time highs so it's very easy I think that can easily be achieved if the market makers want to push it up there or potentially higher um, that we could happen this week it could happen two weeks from now but as long as the trend is up I think we'll continue to go higher towards these upper areas and potentially go even higher I mean you can see on the weekly chart really quick on the Dow Jones it's making higher highs here, but we didn't have this sell-off back at the end of last year. But typically, this is a pattern where you see if we get up to this trend line, um, we might consolidate there. If it holds, we might break out higher. Um, and I, I think all the indices have a similar pattern, especially the ES, with making these higher highs like that. Um, let's take a look. I do like that weekly candle, too. So this 26,700, yeah, I got to clear that. And then we can get to these upper areas where we sold off from back in October or end of September and October last year. So I think if we lose this trend line. I think I was saying uh, probably going to find support around 26,000 or this uh, this trend line and the 50-day SMA. That's where I would look next uh, first. And then if that's lost, it's definitely going to 200-day SMA because that's the major uptrend that we have. Let's take a look at the Russell. Russell cannot get above this high that we had, this top right here, in the middle of October of last year. We tested it once, made a lower high. Then we tried to test it again, we made an even lower high. Then say if we take the same pattern, put it over here, that's a weak signal to me. 
Um, but as long as we don't have a pullback like right here on over here, I think if we can stay here, maybe the bigger markets can keep the Russell up. Usually it's the other way around. Um, but it seems like more of the money is not in the Russell. It's more in the tech sector and the Dow Jones. Um, Cause those indices are moving higher and the S and P seems to be catching up as well, but we are holding the 50 day SMA. We tested it. We're right on the nine day EMA and 200 day SMA. We definitely need to hold this 1560 area and 50 day SMA. Otherwise we're more likely going to come back to this 1530. Um, and then you have the these, just these pivots right here, 1517 and the 1500 area. And then if this was a false breakout where we pushed out of the down channel, then the trend will most likely continue down. But we do need to get above like this 15, what's the close of this, open of this candle? Let's just say 1587 on the Russell. More than likely clear these highs, like the 1595. If that can happen, I think we should be able to take out this, get to this high here, and potentially take that out and maybe go to the next target. At 1627, but if we don't hold here, um, yeah, my analysis, like I just stated, for the down move for those other supports. Let's take a look at the gold. The gold uh, looking weak. It sold off quite a bit last week. And I was talking about how gold looked pretty weak on the daily. Didn't quite get to that target, but I did have another fib target. Uh, I'm trying to think which FIB that was. It was a FIB extension. If I go maybe to the hourly. If you take a look at, maybe it was this FIB. Almost. Got you pretty close to that reversal area. But anyways, there's, you can see we're in a down channel. This is the hourly chart. I do like this kind of looks like a reversal pattern on gold. Um, looks like we had one test here. We had to try to double bottom. We failed, looked below and failed and came back up and now we're holding. So let's see what gold has to do for us to go back up. We're seeing this down wedge right here. Definitely got to get it back above this 1280 area. And definitely this 1285. Those are strong resistance areas and the nine day EMA or in a, or in a, downtrend you can see that the upper part here and the lower part here we are on the bottom of it so there's the bull has got to step in here otherwise we're probably going to go lower and test this pivot here that i'm looking to potentially open up a long position in gold and definitely considering one down here at the 200 day sma and this up major uptrend line so those are areas of support that i'm looking at so 1265 and then the 200 day sma and this lower trend line um let's take a look at I mean, if, if the markets go higher, then I think gold might just consolidate or it might go a little bit lower until there is a need for people to hedge with gold because it seems like people want to put their money in equities at the moment because they are continuing to just go straight up. Let's take a look at crude oil. Crude oil still looks bullish to me. And if you haven't checked the gas pumps lately, you'll notice once you do, you might be, your wallet might hurt a little bit. <laughs> if you uh, have an expensive gas bill before, you can expect it to get even higher. California, the gas prices actually are above $4 a gallon now. I think I paid $4.15 a gallon two days ago. My little Chevrolet Cruze used to take 30 bucks to fill up. Now it takes 50. I mean, it's, totally fine for me, but like that extra 20 bucks, four or five times a, a month for some people could go a long way. You know, even, even me, I don't like paying that, but it's, it, it does look like the oil price is going to continue higher, if, especially if we hold this 6340 area. Let me zoom in a little bit. We did make a lower high here and we're still closing above the nine day EMA. So this 6340, 6330 is strong support, especially if we if we hold the 63, we should continue higher. Um, but the only thing that concerns me is this lower high that we made here. So we're gonna have to clear that trend line because it did look like gold or excuse me, oil wanted to break out last week, and I was watching it. 
it got right to this trend line that I had. And you can see it formed a doji, a bunch of reversal candles, and it did not make it. Um, and you see we're forming this triangle on the hourly chart right now. So just looking at this, we definitely got to get above 64.15 and hold on any retest, and especially the 64.24 to get back up to the upper part of this range, which, uh, the 64.50 to the 64.70 area. Above the 64.72, I think we'll clear that most recent high of 64.79. And crude will probably take a shot at that 65 area, potentially going even higher and continuing this uptrend. But if we lose the 63, I think testing this trend line right here and then the 200 SMA, uh, 6180 is strong support. So I'm still watching for possible retest there. 6180 and then uh, this 200 SMA and then this lower trend line right here. Don't want to lose this one because that will be better for people's wallets, but it'd be not good for the price of oil um, as that's a strong support area. Let's take a look at the dollar really quick. So I keep mentioning the dollar look kind of strong in the past few videos. Dollar does look like it wants to break out and it looks like it's poking right above nice closure outside of that trend line and above this candle right here that I mentioned. And I think the dollar is looking really strong. Nice breakout. I can get rid of these trend lines. Looks good. If we clear this area, definitely going to take another shot. This will be the fourth time I think that we'll test this 97.70 area. Um, and if you just, if I zoom down a little bit, move this chart, I'm still looking at like an upper target on the dollar, just above 98, just continuing to the upper part of this trend line. Uh, Cause you can see the major weekly trend and even the monthly is up. You know, these, these trend lines are still holding and we're continuing to make, or we are making higher lows here but we've been making almost the same high here. So it's kind of like a sending wedge up at the moment. So it looks like the dollar wants to continue higher. Um, let me zoom in really quick. So to have those upper targets. You can see it's kind of like a bull flag. If I draw if you trade Forex right here and then break out right there. It's pretty, it's a bull, a classic bull flag. Um, so if we do lose, I would say there's going to be a lot of support here, but this breakout needs to sustain its momentum to continue higher. Otherwise, it might come back inside this channel and test, go back to test these lowers, these lower lows right here, or not lower lows, but these lows of these candles. But it does look strong. Looks like the dollar wants to continue higher. So let's take a look at some equities really quick. Look at Apple. So Apple was in a swing trade on this dip here. Uh, I think got out like around maybe around this day or something. Yeah, because the inverted hammer. But obviously, I mean, could have waited a couple more days or a week and it would have went up to hit the second target. But the first target was hit at 190, like 199 area, and it hit that day. It hit it on this day. And then uh, looking at 204.34 for the next target, it looks like it's going to hit that already, though. Uh, I think, yeah, Apple does have earnings this week. Or excuse me, no, it's on the 30th. So that's going to be a week from Tuesday. So Apple does look bullish still. I would look for this trend to continue. On. If we we're if Apple is bearish on earnings, I'll probably cover it next week. But you have this 200-day SMA and this uptrend line as support and the 50 day SMA. So there's a lot of support down here around like the lower 190 area, the upper 180s, the lower 190s is good support on Apple. And then you have uh, even this 198, 197 area should be strong support, but um, upper target, let me go to the weekly. Wow, yeah, that looks really bullish, that weekly candle. I think 207, 208 is coming up soon. And then if 
I mean, this will probably happen on earnings, like the 215 to two, the yeah, around 215. I mean, you might even get above, like near 220, if the more if the earnings are really good. And it's just crazy to think that Apple was at 233, what like six months ago, went to 142, and it's already back to 204. About, I mean, like insane what the market has done in just four months. A classic V-shaped recovery. Shocking the shocking the world and most people, but um, that's what I think on Apple. Let's take a look at Facebook. Facebook's right at a critical area. Go figure. Right at resi uh, right around earnings time, twenty fourth. So that's gonna be on Wednesday. They're reporting after the market closes. So I can't imagine Facebook does much until then. It's in a pretty critical area. We still have that major downtrend line, which I drew, redrew to be to that line. We're consolidating just under 180. So if if Facebook decides to move higher, I do have 188 as the next target right up here um, to 192. So that would be my upper target on Facebook. And I mean, if it's really strong, you go to 195 on the earning report. Um, but past two earnings or three earnings have or the Two, the last earning was actually good. We still gapped up. Uh, we gapped up above 160, and that 160 area has been holding 159 to 160. So I think if Facebook is weak on earnings and it doesn't hold this 172 and this uptrend line in the 50 day SMA, I think testing 160. And if that doesn't hold, a gap fill is definitely possible to 150. Let's take a look at Goldman Sachs. So Goldman, let me uh, really like this chart because if you look at what we Goldman has done ever since it's gotten near the 200-day SMA, it's rejected it, and we're right there again. We've already had earnings. That's why I like this chart because you don't have any, you don't want to take a swing trade with like a couple days before earnings. You usually want to wait for that to happen afterwards. Let the price settle, then it figure out which direction it wants to go. And you have this uptrend line right here. So it's creating like an up wedge right up below the 200 SMA. So there's probably a lot of people shorting here. And it looks, this is kind of like one of my favorite trade setups when you're at a strong resistance and I rejected it once. And then it's coiling, Looking, I'm looking for like a, a good risk reward setup for a potential breakout. I mean, if it clears this 211 area, that's really the major resistance that I have. I think clear going up back up to here to about 220, 222 is up next on Goldman Sachs. And then potentially even to the November high that we had of last year, the 234, 235 area. But uh, there should be strong support at the $200 per share area. So we don't want to lose that and this uptrend line in the 50 day SMA. So that's a lower support that I'm looking at, but I am looking for some kind of candle to form here. Um, this would have been nice, this candle right here, this inverted hammer, if it was, if this wasn't the first time that happened, um, if there was a lot of volume coming in, a lot of shorts, and you could take the break above there to get the shorts trapped on there, which would cause a kind of like a short squeeze up. So I'm kind of looking for a setup like that. Um, we'll see what happens. I'm gonna look at Riot, the step blockchain company. Uh, so Bitcoin's uh, holding above $5,000 per coin. And I think the last time I checked it's at 5,300. So it does look pretty bullish on the chart. It looks like it might continue. This chart looks really good to me. There's a lot of buying coming in right here. And we're, we, this is kind of like a flag and we're breaking up higher. I wish I saw this earlier because this was a strong pivot once it broke above around the 440 area. Strong support all the way to 425 on Riot. I think next up could be uh, potentially, I mean, the upper part of this trend line. Got to clear these candles right here. So it's around 580 to the, just below $6 per share and then just below $7 a share, like $6.80. So I imagine this will move in tandem with crypto. Crypto is bullish. 
it remains bullish. Um, if it loses this uptrend line in the nine day EMA, I would look for some weakness to come in, but looking for a better risk reward on this right now, maybe some consolidation, look for the next setup for kind of like what it did here, kind of form something like this, a little triangle breakout, take, take the breakout to the upside. So I'm kind of looking for something like that on Riot. RTN, next one and the last one, this is going to be Raytheon, another similar pattern. A lot of these stocks are now just approaching their major downtrend lines, which is what I'm looking for. And this is a defense company. And I was looking at Lockheed Martin too, but I like this chart better. Although earnings are right here, so I'm probably going to wait till they report earnings. Maybe look at Lockheed as well. So you have these major downtrend lines right here. And then you have this uptrend line. So it's kind of coiling for some kind of move right up below the 200 SMA. So it's a similar setup to Goldman Sachs. So, but the earnings are this week on Wednesday, on Thursday, excuse me, and they're gonna be reporting before the market opens. So it's highly unlikely that I enter a trade before that happens, but I'm going to watch it and see what it does. I think if we clear this, oh, this 189.37 is strong resistance, but clearing these highs, this 187.41, and then these highs right here, the 188.40 area, I think we should be able to break through that 189.37 pretty easily and continue this trend up, which you can see here, um, which would probably put us around the 195 and then even all the way up to where the breakdown here happened around 197. So that, but if the earnings are not good and we lose this uptrend line, I think the trend will continue down with these two trend line, these two pivot points right here. 176 is strong support. So below there, I would be, be a little bit more bearish and look for support back at like 165. So that's all I got for you guys. I'll try to make it as short as possible while also giving you guys valuable information on a lot of these stocks and like my analysis. But if you guys have any questions, just let me know in the comments below. You can also send me an email at contact at brianwweber.com. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, just go ahead and click my face that's popping up now. And I will talk to you guys next week. Have a great time with your family and friends for this Easter holiday, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Have a good one. Bye.